Hello, Miami Dolphin fans. Josh Katzker of the same old Dolphin Show and DolphinsTalk.com here. I hope that wherever and whenever you are watching this, that things are good for you and yours. We are mere days away from the first Miami Dolphins game of the 2021 season where they will travel to Foxborough and take on the Patriots. So this video is going to be a preview of your 2021 Miami Dolphins. Now, I'm sure you're used to all the podcasts that we post every week here on the Dolphins Talk YouTube channel, but this is going to be a little bit different. I've asked a number of different contributors to DolphinsTalk.com to make some quick videos previewing and breaking down each of the Dolphins positional groups, and you're going to hear from all of them. Then, We'll each predict what we think the final regular season record for the 2021 Miami Dolphins will be and whether or not they will make the playoffs. Because let's be honest, that's the big question, right? Now, it's something new and it's something exciting here on the Dolphins Talk YouTube channel. So real quick, do me a favor and like this video. Hit the thumbs up right beneath the video here. Click that and then hit subscribe to the channel for more great Miami Dolphins content. I'll wait, go ahead. You do it? Great. Let's get into it with the offensive units. What's up, guys? Dan Jablonski from Dolphins Talk and also host of the Splash Zone podcast, and I got you covered on the running backs. This past Tuesday, the Miami Dolphins cut their roster down to 53 players. Among those cuts are running backs Jordan Scarlett, Patrick Laird, and recent seventh-round pick Jared Dokes, leaving only three running backs on the active roster, Malcolm Brown, Salvin Ahmed, and Miles Gaskin. Brown and Ahmed are poised to be second and third on the Dolphins' depth chart. Brown is a power back and will be used in short yardage and near the goal line. In 16 games with the Rams last season, Brown rushed for 419 yards and five touchdowns which is what you can expect him to post this season for Miami. Ahmed is an intriguing back who is actually teammates with Gaskin at the University of Washington. Ahmed seems to be much improved and could be a dynamic receiver out of the backfield this season. I traveled down to Miami for training camp and watched the joint practices with the Atlanta Falcons. And one thing really stood out to me. Miami's coaches were consistently finding opportunities for Ahmed to be matched up on a linebacker, which is what we saw in the first preseason game when Ahmed scored a touchdown on a beautiful wheel route against the Chicago Bears. Watch out for Salvin Ahmed to be a dynamic receiving back for the Dolphins in 2021. Finally, we get to Miles Gaskin, who is expected to be Miami's primary back. Gaskin is a shifty runner and a smooth pass catcher out of the backfield. In 2020, Gaskin averaged nearly 100 all-purpose yards per game in the 10 games he appeared in. Gaskin looked dynamic in the second preseason game against the Falcons and has an opportunity for a breakout season in 2021 if he remains healthy. Tua Tungavailoa and Miles Gaskin seem to have a strong connection and it could be a fun duo to watch. In an RPO style of offense, the running back, and the running game is just as important as the passing game. Miami's offensive line must do a good job of creating holes for these backs to take pressure off of Tua Tungavailoa. If healthy, Miami's running back by committee type of backfield should be very successful this season and one of the more important units on the entire team. Hey everyone, this is Tom Ernesty from DolphinsTalk.com here to talk to you about the 2021 Miami Dolphins wide receivers. This might be the best room of wide receivers that the Dolphins have had in quite some time. You know, just looking at the list of guys that they have available, Will Fuller, he obviously suspended for the first game, but he is going to bring a big impact uh, to this offense. Devontae Parker, if he's healthy, again, another impact player. Albert Wilson coming back from taking uh, the year off with COVID and healing uh, his numerous injuries that he suffered in the 2018 season, uh, as well as some of the 19 season. He looks great over the summer. He looked good in the preseason game, moving around uh, in camp. It, it seems like things are starting to come together. With Preston Williams, 
Uh, also coming back from injury, again, another big piece to this offense. Before his injury last year, him and Tua were uh, were in sync. They were playing very well. That game in Arizona obviously was the uh, end of Preston Williams' season, but huge success from him. Matt Collins was a breakout player, uh, good special teams player, but he also had a really good uh, run at wide receiver when the entire unit was basically down. And Jakeem Grant coming back, he is going to provide a spark. He's kind of a gadget guy. He is going to be the guy uh, returning kicks for the Miami Dolphins. And last but not least, Jalen Waddell. They drafted him for a reason. We saw what he could do in some of these preseason games. Uh, and he's got that explosiveness that the Dolphins need uh, to have this offense work. Obviously, everything's predicated on Tua Tungavailoa, but this wide receiver unit, is probably one of the best that we have seen in South Florida in quite some time. I am excited for this group. I think they're going to have a very good, successful season if everybody stays healthy, and that is the if. If everybody stays healthy, dare I say that we should have at least two 1,000-yard receivers this season, and I think this offense is going to put up more than 24 points a game because of these wide receiver, uh, this group that we have here in South Florida. Hey, Dolph fans, David Barron from ESPN here, ready to break down the tight ends to the Miami Dolphins this year. Last year, the Dolphins used two or more tight ends on 36% of their offensive plays, which was seventh in the National Football League. So obviously tight ends is very important, especially for a young quarterback like Tua. We've already seen in the preseason how much he loves the throw to Mike Gusecki, who is one of the better tight ends in the NFL. Put him in about the top 12 tight ends. Thing is, he needs to get separation. Last year, Gusecki, although he had great numbers with catches and touchdowns, wasn't getting a lot of separation. In fact, he ranked dead last in the NFL among quarterbacks I mean, I'm sorry, I'm on tight ends getting separation according to the NFL next-gen statistics. So he's going to have to get a little bit more open to help Tua out. Uh, but the Dolphins are deep in the position. You have Adam Sheehan, who I know is having some COVID-19 and vaccination issues. Hopefully he comes back on the team and gets what he needs to get done and, and, and be able to help the Dolphins out. Again, they use two tight ends. Hunter Long, who was a draft pick this year for the Dolphins out of Boston College, led the, uh, the NCAA in, in catches last year. I know all the attention was on Kyle Pitts, who, who played a little bit of a hybrid wide receiver tight end role. But Hunter Long actually led the country in receptions. He suffered almost a major knee injury in the preseason, but he was back and played in the Atlanta game. So he's going to have some depth. And then you have, uh, you have Durham Smythe out there as well. So the Dolphins have four solid tight ends on the roster, which is going to be important with the two die to tight end sets that they use because they all bring something different. Gusecki is more of a stretch the field guy. Hunter Long is more of a short type big guy that you can use in the red zone and is also a decent blocker. And the other guy, Smythe and Sheehan, are there for blocking purposes. So the Dolphins have what they need, modeling after what they had in New England. As you know, a lot of Brian Flores is bringing the New England Patriots philosophy to Florida. They always had tight ends. And they, you know, Rob Gronkowski was one of the major weapons, but they had tight ends, multiple sets for all of their Super Bowl title years. So they're trying to repeat that down in Florida. And I think what they have here, spending a high draft pick on Hunter Long to add to the depth that they already have with Sheehan, Smythe, and Gasecki puts the Dolphins in a very good shape this year in the tight end package. I'm looking forward to seeing what Tua can use this year with the tight ends. Miami has invested heavily on the offensive line over the past three seasons, but this unit still enters the season as the team's weakest link. The Dolphins are hoping that last year's number 18 pick left tackle Austin Jackson can make a big jump towards fulfilling the expectations that come with being a first round pick, but early signs from camp and preseason indicate that he is still very much a work in progress. At the opposite tackle position, it appears the Miami will go with Liam Eikenberg, whom they traded up to select with the number 42 pick this April. Excitement over Eichenberg's potential was dampened a bit when he started camp playing inside at guard and then missed time with some minor injuries. But he did seem to beat out Jesse Davis by playing well in his limited reps in preseason. Speaking of Davis, many thought he would be squarely on the roster bubble after Miami's draft and free agent acquisitions, but the disappointments that were Isaiah Wilson and DJ Fluker have left Miami once again relying on Davis to be the unit's utility man, able to play four of the five spots on the line, although playing none of them at a particularly high level. After a slow start to camp that saw him get demoted to second string, 
Second-year guard Solomon Kindley looks to have won the starting left guard position, although his play has left much to be desired this preseason. Kidley has the size and power to be a force on the line in the run game, but his lack of athleticism and balance make him a liability protecting the passer against quicker, polished interior rushers. After spending his rookie year exclusively at tackle, Big Bob Hunt is shifting inside to right guard, where most experts projected him to have the highest ceiling when Miami drafted him 39th in last year's draft. Of all of Miami's offensive linemen, Hunt appears to be the one best poised to potentially be a star at his position. After losing Ted Karras and unsuccessfully going after David Andrews of New England, Miami's backup plan at center was to sign Matt Skura to a one-year deal. But problems with consistency snapping the ball and the emergence of Michael Dieter, a third-round pick from 2019, led Skura to be released. Miami did also bring in veteran guard and center Greg Manx via trade towards the end of camp, but Dieter has earned the starting job to open the season. Manx and Davis are joined by undrafted free agent Robert Jones and recently traded for Greg Little as the team's backups on the offensive line. In spite of all of the investments Miami has made in this unit, it is disappointing to only be able to say with confidence that one player in this position room is a bona fide long-term solution. Perhaps with another year of coaching, development, and gelling together as a group, the offensive line will finally begin to solidify itself this season. But it does look very much like we will enter year four of the Greer Flores regime with offensive line still a serious need to address. One of the hottest and most controversial topics amongst Dolphin fans and the media this whole offseason has been the quarterback position for the Miami Dolphins, whether it's been, was Tua play last year good enough? Was it indicative of him being a bust? Or whether it's the Watson talk that's been coming around these Miami parts since, what, February? Um, The quarterback position has just been something that's been up in the air for a lot of people when I think myself, along with the majority of people have known, just give this kid a shot. It's to his time. And now to his time has arrived last year, according to his own trainer, he was about 60% of himself and quote unquote, a shell of the Tua we saw at Alabama. Well, I think Tuscaloosa Tua has arrived and you saw just a glimpse and just a sample and just a taste of what he's going to deliver in the preseason snaps he took this year so far. Now, this year, in terms of what I expect from Tua, I expect 3,800 to 4,200 yards. I expect 28 to 32 touchdowns, and I expect about an 8 to 11 interceptions. I think this year he not only doesn't take a step forward, he takes a massive leap forward. I think he puts the questions of whether he can handle an NFL workload or whether he can be a franchise quarterback to bed. I think right now you're going to see the accuracy, the ball placement, and all the intangibles his eyes, everything else that made him so dominant at the college level now start to translate into the NFL level now that he's back at 100% health. He's stronger than he's ever been before. And Tua, whether you like it or not, is more determined than ever before. And we don't need to hear those words out of his mouth to know that. He's been listening. He's been hearing the noise. And like Richmond Webb said, on the finish line that you can catch right here on Dolphins Talk. He's like the equalizer, and somebody's got to pay for all of this in regards to the people that have been talking that nonsense on him. The throwing Samoan, the Samoan sniper, the cerebral assassin to a tongue of Aloha is about to have a season that's going to turn heads, and I think for the first time in 20 years, we'll allow Dolphin fans to come together and say, we finally got our guy, we finally got our franchise quarterback, and although he's the best backup in the in the game right now, arguably, Jacoby Reset, if everything goes right, which I think it will, will not be sniffing the field once this year unless it's to place hold for Jason Sanders. On special teams, the Dolphins are shaping up to be an exciting team to watch. Michael Pilardi was signed back in March to replace Matt Hawk. 
Now, Pilardi comes in having missed the 2020 season due to an off-season ACL injury, but previously he had spent four productive seasons with the Carolina Panthers. And now while he doesn't have a huge leg, Pilardi is known for his excellent ball placement. Tim Conrad, who was Pilardi's kicking coach at South Florida's St. Thomas Aquinas High School and with the Carolina Panthers, told Dave Hyde of the Sun Sentinel that, quote, he's ridiculously accurate and extremely consistent. He'd line up receivers to run routes. He'd punt 50 or 60 yards of a perfect spiral. It was like a quarterback throwing the ball and it hit the receivers in stride. That's what he can do with a ball, the kind of accuracy he has, end quote. So as much as you don't love to see the Dolphins end drive and punts, Pilardi will be giving you something to look for there. And then of course, the Dolphins of Jason Sanders, who in 2020 was the best kicker in the NFL, going 36 of 39 on field goals and 8 of 9 on field goals of 50-plus yards. That's 92.3%, kids, and that is good. So the Dolphins did what you have to do when you have a weapon like that. They locked him up to a five-year, $22 million extension, which keeps Jason Sanders with the Dolphins through 2026. And I fully expect Sanders to be a useful weapon for the Dolphins again this season. The front office certainly does as well. Blake Ferguson will once again be handling the long snapping duties, and he's been solid since he dethroned the great John Denny. And that leads me to the return game. And this year, the return game is going to be even more fun to watch than normal because joining Jakeem Grant and Noah Igbenogany in returning kicks and punts will be rookie Jalen Waddle. That's right, Waddle Waddle. Waddle electrified the crowds at Alabama with his blazing speed, and he will hope to do the same when he has the opportunity to return kicks in the National Football League. Perhaps he and Grant will be back there returning kicks together, but it's likely that we'll get to see each of them drop back on their own to return kicks. It's going to be fun to watch. But we really don't want to spend too much time discussing special teams. Let's move to the area that was the Dolphins' strength in 2020. The defense. The Dolphins decided to cut a number of young players on the defensive line as they will roll into six linemen in week one against the New England Patriots as newcomers in free agency Adam Butler and John Jenkins join returning players Emmanuel Ogba, Christian Wilkins, Raekwon Davis, and Zach Sealer. Obviously, the big name up front for the Dolphins right now is Emmanuel Ogba. He recorded a career-high nine sacks last season and was an absolute terror working both inside and outside. As for the newcomers, Adam Butler appears to be a guy who will play a lot of snaps and make a big impact. His quickness and run stop ability will be huge for a Dolphins team that really struggled to stop some teams in the trenches, including the New England Patriots, who ran on them pretty well last year. As for the younger guys in Raekwon Davis and Christian Wilkins, the Dolphins will be looking for them to take a very, very big jump forward if this defense is going to repeat what they did last season. Since being a first round pick, Christian Wilkins has flashed at times and has had some good games, but overall he's been largely inconsistent, especially against the run, and it didn't look like he showed much growth in that area during the preseason. As for Raekwon Davis, he's done a ton in the run game. He's used his length really well, his size really well, but hasn't really shown a ton as a pass rusher. If Wilkins can get better against the run and Davis can get better against the pass, this Dolphins defensive line can be really scary. Now, obviously, the unheralded hero of this group is Zach Sealer, who just seems to show up every single Sunday, do his job, make big plays, get after the passer, create pressure, stop the run. He's been absolutely fantastic since being picked up off the street. The Dolphins have done a great job developing him, and he should continue to be a stalwart up front for this team. Last but not least, we have John Jenkins, who's returning after a brief stint with the Chicago Bears after being here for the tanking Dolphins season in 2019. Jenkins comes back to a team where he had a career year with in 2019, hoping to replicate those numbers. For the Dolphins, the D-line is incredibly important to stop the run in two-gap. We'll see if these guys can get it done this year. This is Mike from DolphinsTalk.com, and I'm here to talk about the Miami Dolphins linebackers heading into the 2021 season. When talking about this group, I think you have to start off with the linebackers who are going to bring pressure and complement Emmanuel Agba in getting to the quarterback. And when starting there, it starts off with Andrew Van Ginkle, who is a as a rookie, had one sack, and then last year in 2020, jumped to five and a half sacks. And I think this year we will see another leap where Andrew Van Ginkle can get between anywhere from eight to ten sacks. He is going to have a much uh, 
a larger presence on the field for the Miami Dolphins defense this year, as well as rookie first round pick Jalen Phillips. The Miami Dolphins with their second pick in round one took Jalen Phillips with the thought of he can also complement Emmanuel Agba and use his speed and athleticism to get to the quarterback. So I think those two linebackers sort of jump off the page and what the Miami Dolphins have with this unit in 2021. Also, when talking about the linebackers, you cannot forget Jerome Baker, who signed a very large contract extension this offseason to stay in Miami. He is the glue of this group and the veteran of this group. And I think Jerome Baker, as we have seen in the previous years since being drafted by the Dolphins, will be all over the field. He is someone who can run sideline to sideline, who can drop back in coverage and also bring pressure on the quarterback as well. Elandon Roberts, who had a very solid 2020 season for the Dolphins, but suffered that very scary injury in the Raiders game at the end of 2020. He is back, and he should be ready to go for week one. He is the man in the middle for this team. Now, in the offseason, they did make a trade for middle linebacker Bernardrick McKinney. But as the old saying goes, here today and gone tomorrow, well, well, the Miami Dolphins traded for him in March. He was released in August. So Roberts really is the one, I guess you would say, true middle linebacker of this linebacker group. Sam Aguayvon as well can play middle linebacker, and he had that very strong performance against the Atlanta Falcons in the preseason. He is someone who should see the field at times this year for the Dolphins. And two other offseason acquisitions acquisitions are worth talking about. They are linebacker Duke Riley, someone who sort of specializes in coverage and someone who can cover the running backs out of the backfield, cover the tight ends when needed. And also Brennan Scarlett from the Houston Texans was here, and he is someone who is very good setting the edge, playing the run, and also getting after the quarterback. This Miami Dolphins linebacker group, well, it might not have any very big household names, should be a group that complements each other well with the players they have and should be a very solid group for this upcoming 2021 season. Good evening, Dolphins fans. Kevin Dern from Dolphins Talk Weekly here, previewing the 2021 Miami Dolphins secondary. I would argue that that position unit is the heart and soul of the defense and probably the most talented unit on the entire Dolphins roster. And I think it has probably two of the top five players on the entire roster with Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. Obviously, a very impressive performance last year. The Dolphins led the league in takeaways with 29. They had the best third down defense in the league by two percentage points ahead of the Ravens. And a huge part of that was Xavier Howard's lead leading 10 interceptions and lead leading 20 pass breakups. But we also got really good play from Byron Jones for most of the season. And a lot of what those two can do kind of opens things up for the rest of the defense in terms of coverages that they can call. Primarily Miami is going to be a heavy cover one, cover three team. They'll mix in some cover zero a lot with their blitz packages. And if you look at games like San Francisco last year, they run some more niche coverages like cover five, cover six, six buzz, just because Byron Jones is an insanely good athlete and because Xavier Howard is really, really good at reading route combinations and being able to play in a trail technique, which is something that's tough to do. So you've got those two guys on the outside of corner. Justin Coleman comes over from Detroit. He figures to be the starting nickel for right now. Nick Needham had a very impressive training camp in preseason and figures to play a, a role in the defense as well, whether he's the top backup outside, competing with Justin Coleman for reps in the slot, or being the six DB when they go into dime packages. Obviously, Miami goes into a lot of six-plus DBs on the field with all the different packages that they run. Behind that, they have some interesting depth with Noah Egmanogany, a first-rounder from a year ago. Had a little bit of an up-and-down camp and is still developing. I got to see him live against Cincinnati last week. He's clearly got the talent. I think the major thing that he lacks is recognizing route concepts and just kind of recognizing the situation and down and distance, knowing which man he's got and what routes are likely to occur. You know, that's going to go hand in hand with only having played the position for two years in college. Tro Williams, an undrafted free agent out of Syracuse by way of New Orleans, also made the roster. He is long, physical, and is able to play a multiple different positions for the Dolphins. He can play safety. He can play in the slot. Uh, last week against Cincinnati, he played out wide. Uh, basically for him, it's just refining technique and getting more and more consistent. But clearly the Dolphins saw something they liked there. They also added Elijah Campbell off of waivers from the Jets after the big round of cuts on cut down day. He is a very good special team player and figures to be on you know, multiple special teams units for the Dolphins this year. 
at safety, Eric Rowe, the mainstay at sort of the, we'll call it the strong safety position, even though it's more of a tight end specialist position. Brandon Jones figures to be back in his role, which is sort of a jobs role, playing in the slot, playing dimebacker, being involved in some of those 5-0 front packages. And then he can also play split safety when you want to go into dime or heavy coverage looks as well. He will also play a lot on special teams. Free safety is going to be interesting because Javon Holland was getting reps with the ones, but ended up missing the final two preseason games. So we don't really know whether he's going to start against the Patriots or not. Savvy veteran Jason McCourty is also there and has played that role as well as having played in the slot and played on the outside as well at corner. So he's going to have a, a say in what goes on, but a very good mentor for someone like Javon Holland to lean on. Other depth that we have there would be Clayton Fedulum, who uh, came in last year for, as a free agent from Cincinnati, he was one of the two special teams captains and figures to play prominently on special teams again this year. All in all, I think this is, again, the best unit that we have on the entire team. I think you could maybe make an argument for receiver being close, but they don't have the statistical prowess that the defensive back unit has. And I think we'll see Miami, by and large, play some DB-heavy packages again this year. So look out for those guys. Huge news that they got Xavier Howard to come back. You know, he, for my money, is the top corner in the NFL. Say what you will about Jalen Ramsey and Jair Alexander. Xavier Howard's really good and has the ball skills to go with it. That's the position by position breakdown. Now, let's hear how everyone thinks the Dolphins will fare in 2021. For the first time in a long time, I'm incredibly optimistic about the Dolphins' chances this year. I've got this team going 11-6 and six with the added game this year. I think the Dolphins' schedule in the first part of the season is a little bit difficult. Getting teams like New England to open up the year with new quarterback Mac Jones might pose a little bit of a problem, and they also get Buffalo and the Raiders early in the season, as well as the Colts, who could be healthy by that point. But if you look at the rest of the season, we see the Texans, the Falcons, the Jets a couple of times, the Giants. I expect the Dolphins to run through those games and actually win the games they're supposed to win. We also get to see the Jaguars this year, a new quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, and we end the year with a tough matchup against the Saints, as well as another matchup with the Buffalo Bills and New England Patriots. I think the Dolphins should easily be an 11-win team, compete for this division with the Buffalo Bills, but ultimately, I think they'll end up as a wild card. My prediction for the 21, 2021 season for the Miami Dolphins is that they will go 11-6 and six and make the playoffs as either the 6th or 7th wild card spot. Now, the first month or so of the season, those first five games are going to be a challenge against the Patriots, the Bills, the Las Vegas Raiders team, who Miami was very lucky to beat last year, as we all know, and the Colts, who were a playoff team, and the Super Bowl champs, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If they can tread water in that first month or so, those first five games, I think they'll be okay because come early November, the schedule gets much easier when you get – Houston, the Panthers, the Jets twice, the Giants, they can make up ground there and hopefully win some games against lesser competition. But I think overall the Dolphins will go 11-6. and six. They'll get into the playoffs as, as a wildcard team with a sixth or seventh wildcard spot. Now, as far as a prediction for the Dolphins this year, I think they're somewhere in between the 10 and 12 win mark if everything goes right. I think a lot of it's going to hinge on the offensive line play and how quickly – they're able to eliminate some of the easy mistakes. And I also think that they need to insert Liam Eichenberg in at right tackle. Um, I would even argue that maybe if you do that, you look at Jesse Davis to move to left tackle where he played last year and played pretty well. Um, but I think that's going to be the key for the Dolphins is, is obviously they made improvements with the skill positions. Obviously, Tua looks to be much improved. If the offensive line can eliminate some of those easy mistakes and help in the ground game, I don't see any reason why this team couldn't win 11 or 12 games if they stay relatively healthy. Obviously, the big bugaboo for them has been Buffalo. Brian Flores' Dolphins are 0-4 against the Bills since Flores became the head coach in 2019. That's got to change, and they'll get a chance to change it quickly in week two of this season. The 2021 Miami Dolphins have a great opportunity for success. A strong defense who led the league in turnovers last season, a roster deeper than we've seen in years, and the newly acquired speedy wide receivers all give the Dolphins a chance to challenge the Buffalo Bills for the AFC East division title. With nine home games and the fifth easiest schedule in the NFL, I predict that the Miami Dolphins will go 11 and six this year and earn a spot 
in the AFC playoff picture? What do I envision for this 2021 season? I envision playoffs. I do not expect this team to regress from a 10-win season. They're adding an extra game to the schedule this year. The Dolphins, in my opinion, should see the playoffs, should be fighting for that division crown up until the final weeks of the season. I'm not sure if they're going to get there because I don't think they're ready to take that step yet against the Buffalo Bills, but there is a strong chance that they will be in that division fight and they should be vying for a playoff spot. And the way this season is going to break down, it all hinges on Tua Tungavailoa, making sure this offensive line can protect him, make sure they can open up uh, the running lanes for Miles Gaskin, and obviously healthy wide receivers and defensive players is an absolute must across the board. So this season needs to be a perfect storm for the Dolphins and have everything go smoothly to get to an 11-6 record, which is what I'm predicting them to finish this season. I think the Dolphins are primed to make a playoff run coming off the 10-win season last year. they got to get off to a good start. The schedule is hard early with New England and Buffalo, Indianapolis and Tampa as four of the first five games. Hopefully they get three and two out of that before it gets a little bit easier with Jacksonville, Atlanta, Houston, and the Jets and Giants on the schedule there. I have the Dolphins going 11-6, and 10-7 and 7 at the worst, and challenging for that wild card spot with Buffalo winning the division. I think we'll be all happy if the Dolphins get to 11 wins, which is an improvement off last year. It'd be huge for Tua and the Dolphins to get into the playoffs, and then who knows what happens there. So looking forward for a nice playoff run. 11-6 and 6 is what I have. Miami enters this season with real expectations for the first time in years, and while the division title seems unlikely, anything but a postseason berth would have to be considered a disappointment. The defense looks bolstered by adding more depth and athleticism, but still has some lingering questions at linebacker that could keep them from being a truly elite unit. On the offensive side of the ball, they have elevated their ceiling with the additions of Jalen Waddell and Will Fuller, but there are still major question marks on the offensive line, in the backfield, and most notably at quarterback. As Tua goes, so will the Dolphins. If he takes a small jump forward, Miami will likely be very similar to where they were last year when they were 10-6 and six and just missed out on the playoffs. If he does take that huge leap, though, Miami will find themselves not only in the playoffs, but in serious contention for a championship for years to come. Miami should be able to get through a difficult stretch to begin the season before hitting their stride in the fall where they hit the easiest stretch of their schedule with four games against the Jets, Panthers, Giants, and Jets again before going into a crucial final three-game stretch of the season at New Orleans, at Tennessee, and home against New England. I've got Miami winning that final game against New England to get to 11-6 and six and clinch their first playoff berth in years. So this year, there's expectations have arrived for the Miami Dolphins. That's unquestionable. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, I did a prediction show with some big content creators, and the lowest win total was 11 on the board. Um, you know, and that was me, me and multiple other people. I expect the Dolphins to go 11 and six this this year, um, but. You know, I think that will be good enough for the Miami Dolphins to make the playoffs. I mean, one can hope. I I do think they're going to sweep the season series with the New England Patriots as well as the Jets, but I have a bad feeling about how everything ends up with seeing the Buffalo Bills twice this year because they're the team to beat right now. So the teams I have losing, um, the Miami Dolphins losing to, are the Buffalo Bills in week two. I have them losing to the Colts in week four. I have them losing to the Bucks in week five. Um, the Halloween game against the Buffalo Bills, I have them losing as well. The Thursday night game against the Ravens, I have them losing as well. And then the only game I have them losing the rest of the way after the Baltimore Ravens is the Tennessee Titans. So I do see after that loss to Baltimore, you know, by my stance, they'll be sitting at about five and five. Um, but then I have them going on a five win streak that takes them to a 10 and five. They lose away to Tennessee and then they come back and they beat the Patriots at home to finish 11 and six. I hope the playoffs are on the way. I think we've been through enough. I think as Dolphin fans, we deserve it. So they have the potential to be a playoff team. 
It's now just up to the coaches and the team itself to reach that potential and make some noise in the 2021-2022 NFL playoffs. The Miami Dolphins are ready to compete. The question for me is whether or not they're ready to win. They showed last season that they can win behind a bend but don't break defense with an elite secondary and an offense that could do just enough. This year, their offense in general and their quarterback specifically must take a significant step forward. The organization has shown that they understand this, loading up on receivers and bringing in a new tight end and running back in the draft and free agency. They've also attempted to bolster a young and inconsistent offensive line. Can that line protect Tua? Can Tua prove his doubters wrong? Can the defense duplicate its 2020 performance? Answering those questions in the affirmative will put the Dolphins squarely in the playoff and possibly the division title conversation. Either way, the time for falling just short is over. Anything less than a playoff berth with being jud- will be judged correctly as a failure. And my prediction is that this team is playoff bound. I predicted previously that the Dolphins would finish 10-7, and seven, but I'm changing that to 11-6 and six because I think the Dolphins will, in fact, go to New Orleans on the road and feast off of Jameis Winston. So that had been a loss for me previously. Make it a win now. So that means I think the Dolphins will finish 11-6, and six, make the playoffs, and maybe, just maybe, even get a first-round playoff win. And that's it. That is the DolphinsTalk.com 2021 Miami Dolphins season preview. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. We will be here all season long covering your Miami Dolphins, and we look forward to having you here with us. Fins up, everybody, and go Dolphins!